Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, January 8, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Wrote up a quick diary today with some of the scans that I have observed for the Citrix ADC and Citrix Gateway vulnerabilities. Not a lot of scans so far, no actual exploit attempts, but there are definitely people that are poking around and are looking for vulnerable systems. So shouldn't be too long and I'm pretty sure that uh, some of the bad guys probably have exploits available. There are a number of different security companies and so that have exploits developed by now. So the bad guys are probably not far behind. So patch, patch, patch. And just to illustrate how dangerous these type of vulnerabilities are over New Year's, the currency exchange Travelex uh, went down. They took their website down for a couple days. Turned out the root cause here apparently was a vulnerability in the Pulse Secure SSL VPN. A patch has been available for this vulnerability since April. Now, this is again, it is not the super straightforward one, but still, all you have to do in order to exploit the Pulse Secure SL VPN vulnerability is there is an arbitrary file read vulnerability that allows you access to credentials. With that, you can then exploit a command injection vulnerability using authentication. So, uh, relatively straightforward, uh, but it takes a little bit of work. So, this is not the type of vulnerability that you see sort of widely exploited uh, across the internet, but uh, more in in these little bit more targeted exploits. And for this Pulse Secure VPN, a number of government agencies across the world did actually individually notify owners of vulnerable systems, but still there are hundreds of them still vulnerable, still exposed to the internet, and I guess those files will now be encrypted. And talking about the time that you have between a patch becoming available and vulnerability details being released, well, uh, you make it a little bit break here from Google. Google's project Zero has a vulnerability disclosure policy that essentially states that 90 days after a bug is disclosed to a vendor, the details will be released whether or not the bug is fixed or until now, as soon as the bug is fixed, uh, the details will be released. So as a result, if a vendor quickly fixes the bug, then uh, details will be released as soon as the bug is fixed. What Google is changing is that Google will now always wait at least 90 days. So if a vendor is quick in patching, customers actually have a little bit more time before all the details are being released by Google. Still, of course, once a patch is released, it's often reversible where an attacker would be able to figure out what the vulnerability is even without looking at Google's details. But often, of course, things are a little bit more convoluted than that. And uh, what Google is releasing is certainly helpful for some of the lesser skilled attackers. Now, on a positive note, Google points out that 97.7% of all issues that Google's Project Zero reported last year were fixed within the deadline. And of course, I'll link in the show notes to Google's release. There are a couple more details to this policy change. Google today also released an update for Android. That's the normal monthly Android update. And well, no surprise, we do have a vulnerability in the media framework again. Kind of interesting, it's moderate for Android 10, but critical for earlier versions. This vulnerability can be exploited for remote code execution. The only other critical vulnerability that I spotted when I was sort of quickly browsing through the announcement was a critical vulnerability in the Realtek RTL Wi-Fi driver. So this only affects you if you're using this particular chipset. 
And uh, today was not Windows Patch Tuesday, that's next week. Uh, but remember, next week will be the last time where you will see security updates for Windows 7. If you would like security updates for Windows 7 beyond the January 14th update, you will have to subscribe to Microsoft's extended support services. So you haven't done so, better check up on how to sign up for this. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.